Log Talk Radio. Yep, 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 yep. What's going on, everybody out there all across the land? It's your guy, Keith Harris, right here on the Keith Harris Show on Blog Talk Radio. Speaking of time flying by, uh, it has not flown in this case. It's been way too long since we've talked to this gentleman, uh, uh, or since we've had him on the show, I should say. Uh, uh, fortunately for me, I talked to him uh, a bit regular. Uh, director, producer, and actor Chris Morrissey is going to be joining me on the show again today. Real, real big deal. Uh, as I spoke, we talked before, Chris Morrissey, amazing mind. This guy's creative. He's, he's, he talks with a low tone and he, 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 he talks kind of calm, but I guess that's where it makes so much time for these creative ideas to pop up. So we'll be waiting to talk to Chris Morrissey in just a few. Uh, and that's a big deal. You're known for, you're, you're known for keeping people on their toes, keeping performers on their toes anyway. Uh, speaking of heavy makeup. Because you didn't even tell the cast, you know, it was a play-by-play situation. You didn't tell them the lines until it was time to film, right? Yeah, what what I did was uh, I had the whole script written. Everything, you know, was set for the story. And right when we were about to hold the auditions for the film, I just didn't want to have people get bored so I didn't I didn't want to give everybody the script and be like okay this is who the killer is these are the little twists and turns in the film let's shoot it and then everyone's going to just kind of show up and you know be on autopilot you, trusted, you definitely trusted your team though you had to have trusted them because there's some people who might not have took that chance because you had to know who you were working with and to know, hey, listen, no matter what, when, when, no matter when or what I throw at them, they're going to be able to pull it out without you having to do a hundred takes and spending extra money for extra location. Yeah, I mean, what what I did was I, I broke the script down into scenes, and each actor got their scene. Uh, like if we were shooting, you know, uh, if the if the actor was shooting for say three days. I would give them half of the script, uh, only their scenes, and then I would wait until we shot it, and then I'd be like, okay, here's your, here's your script for Friday. So you mm-hmm. have, like, two days to, to familiarize yourself with it, and you can't tell anybody, you know, what's happening in the scene, and, it, and if any of the other cast members ask you questions, don't tell them anything. In fact, if you make something up to throw them off, Okay. And okay. Hold on. Hold on. So did, did, hold, hold on. Hold on. I'm sorry to stop you. Hold on to your thought. So listen. Uh-huh. Dang, yo, this just took me way off, Chris. Because now, now I just thought of a like whole other movie plot, right? But so so there was more than people not just because here's the mystery to this. So not only were were people not aware of their scenes, but now this is like a movie going on within a movie. This is like a mystery within the making of a movie. You see what I'm saying? Because you're not, they don't know what's going to happen. And, and you guys are shooting the movie, but at the same time, there's a movie happening because it's a mystery of who's lying and who's going to do what. Because this is what I saw. I saw one person running lines and not knowing what the other person's lines in return were going to be. Am I right? Well, well, if there was two actors in the scene, they both knew, you know, they, they rehearsed the scene together and they knew what was happening. But if there was, if somebody was getting killed, um right. They would be, you know, they, they weren't allowed to tell anybody. So, so some of the other actors that weren't filming that day would call them up and be like, "Hey, what did you film last night? Did did anyone get killed? I noticed, right. you know, your your outfit has fake blood on it. So, did someone get stabbed? Like, well, you know, what's going on? Tell and who did it? And you know, and, and and I know there was probably one or two people that might have revealed some things to some of the other cast members because I would get. Uh, cast members come up to me and say, hey, so-and-so told me that you guys filmed this one part. Does that mean that that person is the killer? And I'm like, I don't know. Definitely. I mean, maybe. You know, I would, and then I would kind of get mixed up, too, because then I'd be like, wait a minute, do they know that we shot this, or did somebody See. tell them, or did I accidentally tell them? <laughs> so See, we I got my own. a couple different things. 
see, I, I, I'm into the, I'm, I'm like, I be into the, the conspiracies and mysteries. And see, I think you got, you may have something sneaky going on, Chris. You might be making another movie inside <laughs> of a movie right now. You know what I'm saying? And not telling nobody. And then later on, the people that snuck, because you know, or you may know who the people that leaked some information out were. So then in the actual mystery movie, they may be the ones that are going to get killed and knocked off for telling what happened, and they don't even know it. Because you'll be kept that one a secret phone too. Man. Well, and, wow. and you know, the, the, this is kind of like, it's a good thing and it's a bad thing, but one one funny thing that I learned when we made one of the earlier films is, um, you know, we had cast one of the uh, actresses for a couple weeks, we, her her whole she was gonna you know be in the whole film for, for the two weeks that we were filming her her part, and after maybe about four days of filming, you know she came to us and said that she's not available for the following week, and we were just like, well wait a minute, why why would you not tell us this in advance? Like you know it just became a big crazy headache. So we. Me as the writer, I was able to uh, quickly write, you know, her her death scene. So we killed killed the character off so we could accommodate her schedule, and it actually worked like a charm because now for future projects, I mean, not not all of the films are horror films, so you can't kill people off. But that's right. one thing is, as a writer, you got to expect, you know, not everybody's schedules are going to work out. And that, so you know, you might have to film. If, if anybody has a death scene, film it first, because oh. that might be the chance you have to complete. You know, if they can't finish filming, you know, for a couple of days, you you might have to <laughs> throw that scene wow. that you shot first as their last scene. Oh, kill them off in the movie for whatever reason they're leaving. <laughs> Right. Okay. Okay. So I guess that's why I hear people people joking when they you know you talk about getting killed off in a movie. <laughs> like when I'd be like, does somebody get killed? And I guess to you know, there's a two way to that question because you ask people you you know as an interviewer you try to get the information about the movie like that you're gonna die. But then at the same time, I guess you're kind of asking about when they're when they're done in the movie too. So it's like yeah, uh, you know, that can go both ways. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the main thing is that when you're casting a film, you know, that that's the the more and more films that we've made, we've we've learned to, to do everything up front and let people know what you know what they're looking at as far as shooting days and, and that we need them available during the whole shoot because you never know we might have to go reshoot something, you know, a week after we filmed it, and you know. Unless unless you're working with with you know one or two people, uh, and you know up front that they can they're only available for one or two days, then of course you're going to film everything during those two days. Right, but right. Um, yeah, we 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 try to make sure <laughs> we try to make sure that everything you know is all up front, so you know what to expect. But we do like right. to keep them on their toes uh, with. Stuff like with heavy makeup, not not revealing everything about the plot, and you know that's that's a big trust issue. They're they're trusting in me because they don't really know until they sit at the uh, premiere. Uh, a lot of the actors didn't know who the killer was and what the outcome of some of the plot line was. So I I you know I had to kind of ask them to trust me on it. So you know you may end up loving the film or hating the film, but at least you're going to have fun making the film because it's, <laughs> you know, you're going to keep you on your toes with, uh, you never know what can happen. Right. So you're like, so now, and, and, and to talk about, to name a few of your trustees and, and I want to know how to pronounce her name correctly. Is it Am- Amble? Is it Amble? How do you say Amble? Am- Amble? Oh, is uh, it Am- 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 Amble Kile. Ambo Kile. Wow. Yeah. That's a beautiful name, Ambo Kile. And I had, I, out of all the ones I thought of, I did not come up, I didn't get that one. <laughs> but uh, 
And and that's a beautiful name. Okay, but now so and, and she is Abra in the film. Again, I don't want to give away too much, but she's Abra in the film in heavy makeup. Yes, it's actually uh, Abra. Abra, okay. She plays Abra, and uh, her character is a, a a Hollywood mogul. She's she's the head of a film studio, and uh, she's very. Uh, key character in the film because uh, the, the whole storyline revol- revolves around uh, you know she's making a film and her she hires these actresses to, to be a part of her project and you know it's a very very important role she's a really great actress I've actually I used to go to um, acting school and she was one of my classmates and we kept in touch over the years and I always told her, I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a role for you one day. Wow. And I'll let you know when when that time comes around, we need to stay in touch because I'm gonna tell you when it's time to do this. And so, you know, uh, probably about ten years after we were in class together, I I got in touch with her and I was like, Hey, I have this role for you and you're gonna love it. So that's how the role of Abra became. So she's, she's wow. somebody, and she's you know she's a musician, she's a songwriter, she's a model. She she was modeling for years, um, so she's definitely somebody to look out for. And, and a lot she's gotten a lot a lot of people that have seen heavy makeup have said how great she is in the film. And you know I've had a couple of people, other filmmakers, um, ask for her information because they want to audition her for their project. So I think that's really cool. I think she's got a lot of stuff going right. on and for the future. And 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 then there's uh Jessica Vail who who we look forward to coming back on the show. She'll be back on here soon. Uh as- oh yeah. Jessica Jessica is such a great person to work with and the, the funny thing about her role is um I actually got to know her because I'm friends with her mom. Okay. And uh, so I, I met her through her mother, and we became friends. And um, I didn't, I didn't know when I first met her. I didn't know that she was interested in acting. So I actually approached her and said, "Hey, you know, would you be interested in doing, you know, a small part in the film?" And she's like, "Oh yeah, I've been acting since I was a kid." And I'm like, "Oh, I had no idea." So oh, wow. I, I, yeah, I had a small part that. Uh, basically, you know, in the film, she was maybe going to shoot for two or three days. And yeah. every time we shot her scenes, I was like, oh, she's so good. Like, I want to bring her back. Let me let me write in this extra scene or have her, let me add her to the scene because I think she brings so much to the to the character and her interaction with uh, the other actress, with Whitney Quinlan. They're actually uh, best friends in the film. They have such a good chemistry that I was like, okay, let's let's put Jessica in some of these other scenes that Whitney's in. And um, next thing you know, as we were shooting and we had to reshoot a couple things, I'm like, so her Jessica's character actually became one of the leading characters in the film. So she's pretty much in the whole film. And it started out with just a little two-day role at the beginning, and then it became like a, you know, Full right. film shoot. <laughs> now you know I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna make a comment just before I ask this next question. But I, I was gonna ask the question, but it made me think of this. Another thing, you have stylish. you you you. I notice you 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 guys cast stylish people. It seems like your 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 the people that you work with. They all have styles. They have their own uh, unique style about them. And it, it, it seems like it will bring flavor, and especially to the types of films that you do. So my next question, what is your mindset while writing uh, a cult classic type film? Like, where, where do you have to go? What place do you go to, to, to pull these great films out of you in the cult genre? You know, I, I always, because I grew up watching a lot of, I, I watched everything from, Foreign films, art films, uh, exploitation films, horror films. So I, you know, I, I was able to soak in all aspects of, of the film world. Anything from the indie films 
or the great 70s, you know, classics and to the very odd, campy, you know, films like, um, I don't know, Rocky Horror Picture Show and the John Waters films and the David Lynch films. So I guess I my influences range from a mishmash of all of it. The art films like, um, uh, you know, Jean-Luc Godard and... Uh, Henry Jaglom, those are those are the very, you know, uh, I would say my films are kind of a mixture of the crazy exploitation films meet the classy indie art film or foreign films. So, um, as a as a writer, I try to write about things that I actually that appeal to me. You know, I, I like a good storyline. That's you know a classic storyline. But then I, I I add twists to it, and I think that comes from the exploitation film aspect. I guess you know, kind of like Tim Tarantino, he, he's he kind of you know takes bits of everything and. and forms it on his own, and it becomes a Quentin Tarantino film. So I think all filmmakers do that with whatever influences they have and whatever uh, things that inspire them, and I, I try to do that for my film. But mine tends to be very crazy and out there, So, but that's okay. <laughs> but I, I know some people are going to love my film, some people are going to hate my film, some people are going to be like, what the hell is he thinking? But... <laughs> I think that's the beauty in it because I just want people to have a good time and, you know, if they love it, great. And if they don't, you know, thank you for taking the time to actually watch it. Yeah, they, <laughs> yeah mean, right. Make it all the way through. Yeah. Right. And, you know, and, and that always happens too because I've, I've been at screenings of my films over the years and I've had people loving it and the whole audience is going crazy and we had like, you know, every seat fill and and then there's been times where there's like you know ten people in the audience and you see two people get up and walk out halfway through and you're like oh my god did they just leave oh they hated it <laughs> but you know that's, that's hey you know that's that's fine right. I mean I'm, that's probably, I'm yeah you can't please everybody and you know the people that you you do please hey I embrace it if you guys enjoy my films and hey i'll keep making them and hopefully you right. guys will enjoy the other ones right what directors produce what director or producer would you like to work with in the future well one one thing that um well i i, I would like to work again with david lynch <laughs> I didn't oh, wow. really work with him in a sense where, because uh, I had done Twin Peaks when Twin I first Peaks, started right. acting, but I didn't work one on one with him. He was directing the episode that I was in, but he was directing it over like a megaphone. So I never saw him, but I heard him, <laughs> which was very weird, but I loved it. Um, and then. You know, he's somebody that I would definitely want to work with him. The fact that they brought back Twin Peaks, which is what coming out on Showtime, um, if that continues to to where they're making new episodes, I would love to be a part of that. Um, but as far as other filmmakers, I would say maybe Henry Jaglom, because I've always liked his films, and I don't know if he's making. It any more films. I know he had a couple films come out recently, but um, I would like to maybe bring my take on Henry Daglum's film. I think that would be what about, interesting. And what, what about stage? You've done stage before too, right? Yeah, but the thing is, uh, I, I don't... I, I've done plays. I've done plays since I was a kid and I did plays, you know, as a, uh, you know, young adult. But the thing is, uh, it was more out of necessity because at, when you, when you're an actor, it's like they want you to learn all aspects of theater and, and being in front of an audience and stuff. And I don't yeah. know. I've, I've had some really great experiences with, 
plays, but then I've had some total mishaps where I'm on stage and I start laughing or I've dropped things and, and got my eyes. Yeah. There was, yeah, like I had, I was wearing a, a cape in this one scene and I, when I walked through the door, I didn't realize that the door closed and the cape got caught oh. and then that threw me off. So I, I'm not good in front of a live audience. No. It really takes a lot of focus to, to not be distracted and then, you know, yeah. it becomes a big blur because when you're done, you're like, oh my God, did I just do that whole scene? Yeah. Like, was I? <laughs> Yeah, and you don't get but, to do it. You, know, you don't get to do, do it over for that night. Is this there? Yeah, and of course the the night like we, you know, I was in a play where I think there was it was for about two weeks, and the the one night that I didn't invite anybody to come see it because I think we were we were doing like previews or something, or it was opening night, and I just didn't want to be where it was the first night in case I messed up. And of course, that was my best night. I did so good. And then the night when I knew friends of mine were coming or industry people or casting people, I was like, total disaster. <laughs> and yeah, I just, that's too much pressure. So I, I do like, as an actor, to focus on like film or television or you know, stuff like that. But. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, because that, that's that. Yeah, that's a tough one. You when the when the curtain when the curtain rises and it's like you know every even the facial expressions. Now let me let, before we go, let me ask: um, heavy makeup, uh, trick of the witch, or any uh, what films are available for rent or purchase that people can go check out? Now, well, okay. At at the moment, we're taking the older films and we're preparing them for blu-ray release because you know when when the films were made you know blu-ray had not come out and the high best televisions hadn't come out so you know all of that stuff was made all of the films were made pre-hd so you know there's everything has to be remastered and re you know put to blu-ray for high best so we're working on that for the earlier films for uh superstar female serial killer um Fashion Murder Groove and Lip Gloss Explosion, and then Trick of the Witch, Trick of the Witch and Heavy Makeup are continuing their theater runs. So probably by the end of the year, those will be released on Blu-ray. And then um, what we're thinking is, since all of the older films are going to be coming out too, we, we might do like a box set of all of the films together as a whole, like a retrospective. Yeah, uh, and then each one will be available individually, and then um, we're actually working with uh, a distributor that's interested in getting it all onto the uh, on demand and uh, you know different avenues like Amazon and Netflix and all that. So that's that's in the works. So I, I don't have any release dates yet, but it's being worked on and. It'll be something to definitely look forward to. But the theater screenings are coming soon. Those are going to be in May, the end of May. And we'll be putting out on social media all the dates and locations and the cities for the uh, for the theater tours. And then anyone in London uh, will be announcing the uh, London dates. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, that's gonna be groovy right there. And we we're gonna um when you guys announce those dates, we're gonna uh, get them out to people as well, you know, through social media and things like that, you know, through our um you know global global GN connections and stuff like that. So we'll let people know. We'll do definitely do our part to let people know that y'all are on the way to London, and, and to expect y'all to, to expect y'all there and make sure that they go out to to those screenings and party with you guys and and, and get to meet you all. That would be great. And we're actually going to be doing um, some pre-parties for the L.A. events. Uh, so oh. that will probably be early May, uh, probably a couple of weeks before the, the screening date. So that will be a, a great time for everyone to come and network and, and do red carpet. And, you know, mm. and we've got a lot of fun things in store, so we'll, we'll be keeping everything posted on social media. And right. you can check it out at um, chrismorrisfilms.com and check Twitter and Instagram. It's uh, Chris Mor- at Chris Morrissey Films 
for Instagram and for tw- Twitter, it's at Chris Morrissey. And then, of course, on Facebook, everything's on Facebook for each film. And yeah. Just type in the film names and every- everything will come up. <laughs> hey, you know, we should, we, should, we should throw a party out there uh, in, in L.A. It, it, you know, at one of those for, for that for one of those events, and have fashion murder groove playing in the background on the big screen while everybody enjoying themselves. Because your movies, man, your your movies, they're, they're, that's one one class they also fit into. They're the type of movies that when people are throwing, you know, people are throwing gatherings or get-togethers and, and people just kind of enjoying themselves and drinking. You got the music, but people like to have something to focus on as well. You know, sometimes you got people in the party and they're not as social as everybody else. You don't know where to look around. You don't know where to look in the room. You kind of – and, and – and so you guys make the type of movies that are actually good for a party atmosphere because people can kind of watch that stuff, be focused, and still realize, you know, the environment. So it's kind of cool. We should, we should think about that. Yeah, that's a great idea. And, and um, I know one of the things we did in the past is uh, we, when we released the trailer for Trick of the Witch, we, we uh, threw it out at, at a club. And we premiered the trailer to the crowd, and then we had it projecting on a loop. Uh, we had two trailers for the film. They were playing on the wall of the club on the big screen. So, you know, and we have one of the actors is a dancer, and he did, like, a dance performance. And then we had, um, like, the band play some of the songs that are from the soundtrack. So, yeah, we definitely Man. like to do events to, you know, promote and do whatever we can to make everyone have a great time. Yeah, no no doubt, definitely. And big shouts out to Rockwell, too, and, and uh, big shouts out to you for, you know, for putting everything in order with that, too. Definitely got to get him out there, uh, get get him out there as well. Might even get him to perform. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we and that's, that's one thing that we're talking about. Uh, we definitely want to work on some projects together. So him and Cher Cherie and I... We're yeah. we're in talks on doing some really cool things uh, in the future, so we'll, we'll keep you posted on that. Definitely, <laughs> absolutely do, absolutely do. I want to I want to be there to get the up close and personal on that, no doubt. Yes, definitely. Listen, listen, Chris. Look, it's, it's always a pleasure, man. You know what I'm saying? Again, uh, for everybody out there, uh, you know, Chris is a great guy. You know, we we get to speak off off air as well. So uh, he, he's a wonderful guy, always busy, always at it, always hard work. Uh, listen, Chris, we thank you for your contributions. Everyone thanks you for your contributions uh, just from day one and, and just how you turned out and the things that you learned from this, this industry. And, and, and we like it uh, in particular because it's, it's genuine. It's, it's the leather, I should say. It's the leather fabric of it because you put the hard work in. Um, and, oh, and, and the, well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, like the vitamins and the minerals, you know, everything needs this energy and this proper <laughs> nutrition to grow, right? You know, so, so uh, you know, we thank you for doing that. Listen, any shout outs? We got like one minute and 10 seconds. Any shout outs? Um, yeah, well, I, well, first I want to thank you and uh, Janet Lee because you guys have been so supportive and having us all on your shows, and I think that's so cool. Um, Big shout out. We love being a, on the shows. Um, I also wanted to just put it out there for, you know, industry people, actors, uh, filmmakers. You know, we're all kind of throwing the rope and helping each other, you know, rise together. So, you know, we're the type of people, filmmakers, that, you know, feel free to reach out to us. You know, we're, we've got many different projects in the works and we're always, you know, supporting each other. So if we can do anything to support you guys, we'd love to have you support us. And, you know, it's just a, a, a mutual team of yeah. people just networking and helping each other. So, you know, feel free to reach out to us on social media about your projects and stuff, and we'll do whatever we can to help get the word out there and, you know, support each other. That's what I'm talking about. Genuineness, genuineness, and, and it feels good. That's that's what genuine people when they do it, do it, uh, do exactly what Chris said. That's what. Uh, before we go, Twitter and Facebook handles, Chris. Facebook, it's just Chris Morrissey. Uh, Twitter oh. is at Chris Morrissey, and then the other Instagram and um, 
Instagram's uh, at Chris Morrissey Film. And uh, I think that's, oh, yeah, and, oh, yeah. Chris Morrissey Film. Com. Well, everybody got it. My bad, Chris. I had forgot I asked you that. I didn't mean to drag you through that again. But it's important for everybody to get that twice, and we'll make sure we post it, too. Listen, Chris, it's always a pleasure. We love you, brother. Keep doing your thing. Uh, we'll make sure we keep following you, and we'll see you in L.A., and we'll be talking to you while y'all out in London. We'll catch you guys live on the air. Awesome. Thanks so much. All right. You have a wonderful day, Chris. Anything? Um, you too. Anything? Get, well, nah, I, I'm going to ask you how's your day, but you always busy. All right. Be blessed, and we'll be talking to you, bro. Ah, uh, Thanks. You too. All right. Chris Morrissey, everybody, on the Key First Show, ladies and gentlemen, right here on Blog Talk Radio. Grand, grand guy right there. Um, amazing. Make sure you follow the projects, Heavy Makeup, Trick of the Witch. Uh, again, they'll be releasing on Blu-ray. Uh, other great films like uh, Fashion, Murder, Groove. Um, uh, what else is there? Uh, Lip Gloss Explosion. Wow. That's crazy. I can't wait to find out what that's about. I wonder if, like, people lip gloss exploding when they put it on. That'd be crazy, right? Say. Anyway, man, you never know what Chris is. a big day. He always keeps the people surprised and expense. That's what time it is. Keep our show, Blog Talk Radio. Don't forget, tomorrow, Donna DeNero on the show. All right? That's what time it is. We out.